Norman Holland, my friend. Welcome to Thank Digi you. Media Pros here at Edit Fest LA in wonderful Walt Disney Studios. In beautiful downtown Burbank. In beautiful downtown. And it was a beautiful day today, too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when, like editors, we're inside. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> what do we know about it? Beautiful day. Now, you, you were in a panel, and then you were a, 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 a panel moderator. Lead moderator yeah. That's what you call it. Uh, great panels you did. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about Edit Fest LA and, and your involvement in it today. So I've been working with Ace on Edit Fest for years, and this these days, the Edit Fest days, are awesome because there's a tremendous number of editors who are here who just have come to talk about editing. Assistant editors here to talk about editing. Uh, the effects editors here to talk about editing. The art of it, not the technology. So that's why I love being here. And all of the panels are involved around the art. So the two panels that I did, uh, one was on cult films. Yeah. So because I had edited That was a Heathers, great panel, by the way. Oh, I so enjoyed it. Uh, we got to talk about what we brought to those particular films that turned into cult films later on. And then there's a panel I do here that I did here at the end of the day uh, uh, called The Lean Forward Moment based on a book that I wrote. Yep. Uh, and uh, what it really is is just four amazing editors across a wide variety of fields uh, who bring a scene that inspires them that they didn't cut. Something that they go back to in order to get new inspiration, or something that inspired them to get into the film business or editing uh, to begin with. And they show it and talk about why. And you asked all the editors that, so I'm going to ask you that now. What is a film that inspired you that you didn't uh, touch? <laughs> Turnabout's Fair Play, exactly. right? Exactly. Uh, for me, there's a number of films. At Hard Part, would be just doing one. But that I think that pretty much anything by Stanley Kubrick just sucked me right in when I was growing up. So uh, something like Pads of Glory is something that I like to go back to because it looks so straightforward but is so amazingly intense for the audience. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? How do they do that? So, so that's one. Uh, I also really like a lot of comedies as well. So. Uh, there's things that range from Austin Powers. I uh, like Scott Pilgrim is a film that I really, really like. Uh, that I go back to periodically to go, well, how can I kind of reframe my old stodgy attitudes? And it only takes about a year to get old stodgy attitudes, right? Right. So we continually have to go back to the well and refresh ourselves and remind ourselves why we're in the editing world and why we do this. What's your thought on TV show editing now? Because if you watch a lot of these shows today, they're almost like mini features, but they, they do it once a week now. So right. what's your take on that? So this is almost a cliche, what I'm about to say, but um, lots of people say quite correctly that such amazing storytelling is being done in television now, even as opposed to features. I don't necessarily agree with that part completely, but the idea of having a canvas that's 10 episodes, 12 episodes long, nine seasons long, as Susan Vale talked about in my panel working on Grey's Anatomy, right. how you can build characters and story arcs across nine seasons, seven seasons, 12 or 20 episodes in one season. It's such an amazingly fantastic broad uh, canvas right. that it's very exciting to me. And by the way, webisodes, same thing. Uh, I just want to encourage a lot of your viewers to, to think about uh, how doing something smaller scale but spread out across multiple episodes really has a chance uh, or gives you a chance to develop character in a way that, oh, I'm going to make a feature, does not. Right. And a lot of people always concentrate on the tool and they forget the story, right? So it's really important to, like you said, develop the character and focus on the story. Right. So yeah. there's no panel that was here today yeah, that talking focused about on Premiere tool. or Avid or it didn't matter. Doesn't matter. And in fact, one thing that I love, 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 love in my Lean Forward Moment panel was that 
all of the editors, when they selected the scenes that inspired them, chose character-based, emotional stories. Right. So uh, that's we get enough. There are plenty of places, including on Digimedia, uh, uh, where that we can really learn technical aspects. Right. So it's good that there are places where you can learn how to think like an editor, how to think like a storyteller, uh, how to bring much more uh, truth to your story so audiences can relate to it. I don't mean truth in that kind of weird yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of way. I mean that's something that audiences can recognize and relate to. One tip for an up and coming editor. People, meet people. Network, everybody's saying that. Well, because we're at a networking event, yeah. it's really, uh, it, the, the days are gone when you as a filmmaker uh, could make a movie and then let it out into the world and hopefully people come to you, totally doesn't exist anymore. Right. So you're competing for eyeballs, you're, you're competing for attention span, um, and you're competing against a ton of people whose schools like mine, I teach at USC, right. uh, we graduate 200 people a year. Right? So that's your competition. So you have to be different than the next person, and the way to make yourself different than the next person is to let that person get to know you a little bit more and then zing them with how awesome you are. So networking is super important. That's online networking, that's personal networking, that's all of the above. Just network, yep, definitely. Anyway, enjoy Edifest Lane. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, great to see you.